You are watching Leicester Till I Die TV. Good morning, good afternoon, good night, goodbye. Hello, depending where you are in the world. This is LTID TV from Leicester Till I Die. Uh, if you're thinking I'm looking a little bit bruised under the eyes at the moment, it's because of this smashing I got from Dave on the post-match at the week on Friday night. Um, <laughs> I was being picked on everybody. But thank you for joining us. Uh, whether you're watching on YouTube, and if you are, thank you very much. Do feel free to join in the chat. Keep it respectful and clean. Uh, please smash the likes as well. It does help the channel. It uh, helps our algorithms. And at my age, my algorithms need all the help they can get. And, of course, feel free to subscribe. It is free, and that helps the channel just as much. And if you are listening via your favorite podcast platform, thank you so very much. This is brought to you in podcast form in conjunction with Talk Sport. Of course it is. Of course. Why wouldn't it be? The TalkSport Fan Network is the ultimate on-demand destination for the UK's best fan-led football podcasts. Including Leicester Till I Die. Independent analysis and reaction for the Foxes faithful. The TalkSport Fan Network. Unbeatable club-dedicated content created by the fans for the fans. Follow the podcast on the TalkSport Fan Network. Pleased to be associated with uh, Talk Sport. Uh, I've got to say, just before we start tonight, commiserations, but congratulations to Leicester City women. Um, went out. It's probably the story of uh, Leicester seasons, uh, Leicester City women season, story of my sex life. A very good start and petering off at the end. Uh, but they did lead up until about the 85th minute. Um, but we went out 2-1 uh, in the semi-final of the Women's FA Cup. Uh, but it's the first time they've got that far. So well done to them. Um, Chelsea also went out. So um, we weren't just on our own. Um, I've got to say, I've been all over the Leicestershire live today and I cannot find that they have given it any mention at all uh, in the sports area. Um, maybe I'm wrong, but are Leicester, Leicestershire live ignoring the women? <clears throat> One woman we can't ignore. And just to say that tomorrow we are going to be, I am going to be interviewing, if you remember 2018 Britain's Got Talent, only five years ago, of course you do. In the final, there's a group of ladies called D-Day Darlings. And, of course, it's the 80th anniversary of D-Day this year, uh, as well as being the 10th anniversary of Surrey Hills Community Radio. And on that day, I will be doing a... Uh, the, my golden hour will be, obviously, all wartime special songs. And tomorrow, I'm off for the week from the radio, but I'm going to get up early to do an interview with the D-Day Darlings. Let me bring in... Oh, she is a darling... Um, and that's Kate. Good evening. How are you, Kate? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. How are you? I am very well, thank you very much. And of course, as the advert says, this is the home of Kate and Dave. We couldn't have Kate. It'd be like having it would be have, like having Ronnie Bark with no Ronnie Corbett. <laughs> if Kate is a D Day darling, Dave, well, he probably he remembers D Day. Let's bring him in. <laughs> When he's when he, well, I don't know what he's doing there, but Dave, hello, hello. How, how are you? I'm all right, thank you. I was Brilliant. born in rationing times. Say that again, sorry. I was born in rationing times. Wow, well, I was born just after, so yeah, 
it's still but talking of rationing dave i know you like your food so what i've put together for you here it isn't a video don't worry but i have put together a dave sandwich oh, God. <laughs> there we go. i should be so lucky <laughs> lucky 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 <laughs> yes dave's dreams all came true last week we had two capes in and dave was stuck between them <laughs> kate you've gone quiet i mean do you know, do, give it tell me tell me your memories of that i was trying to help dave out with some technological issue and that's what they call it these days, is it? And we ended up having two Kates, which nobody needs in their life, really. <laughs> One is enough. Dave did. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> if I tried it a little bit better, he had a huge grin on his face. But, uh, but <laughs> that is Dave's dream. And, of course, uh, we could have a sing-song for, for D-Day because, of course, Kate uh, does a very good we'll meet again, don't you, Kate? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not tonight, though. No, no, Dave, get her on the radio station. She, she likes a good sing song. Not <laughs> you tonight, make me, don't you? You really do. <laughs> right. Um, look, I managed to survive Friday night just about. Uh, it took me all weekend to recover, but we are going to be looking at uh, well, I called it Enzo's striker dilemma. Uh, just before we do, we'll just say a few hellos. Ren is in. Hi, Renny. How are you? Ben is in. Uh, hi, Ben. Um, you said the other day, you said yesterday, Ben, happy birthday to your dad. Uh, Renny, sorry. Ben, if we're talking about Enzo, I think we need to put two up front and do a 3 5 2. Well, what we need to do and what Enzo will do, look, we were talking about it for five years under Rogers. It only happened for about 10 games. Highfields is in. Hello, Highfields. Um, and from Singapore, hello, Andrew. Good morning oh, to you. Hi, Andy. How the devil are you? Oh, you do know Andy? I do, yeah. Ah. An Dave. old friend. Calm, calm down, Dave. Dave, get back. <laughs> Dave, down, Dave. Down, Dave. Down, Dave. Dave, Dave, Dave down. <laughs> it's not good at his age to have rivals, you know. Um, Go back look, 500. <laughs> Where do we go with the strikers? Um, I mean, I, I've, I've said this, you know, we, we all know two would work better. And in the review, Kate, Brad actually put his team out and he actually had two up front, but actually it was only one up front because Kalecci was kind of, or, or Jamie Vardy, whoever the second striker was, was playing more behind the front striker. Can you see that happening? We need to do something because we're just not, you know, the strikers aren't on form at the moment, are they? No, they're really not. And that's ends part of Enzo's dilemma, really, is that four strikers um are all off form at the moment. So it's a real issue. There's not there's not any of them that have sort of having a hot period at the moment. So I would love to see more of a two up top, particularly in the Millwall and Plymouth matches where we just needed goals. We need, we've not scored in the last 180 minutes. So we need goals. And in the last 15, 20 minutes, just try and take it to them. But I think more importantly, I think Enzo's system can still work. And we spoke about this quite a bit after the Plymouth match, like some friends of some, with me with a few friends were just saying that Enzo's system can work, but he needs to put it 20 yards further up the pitch when you've got a team that are quite dogged in defence. So it can still work, but you've mm. got to sort of load the forward lineup. It doesn't necessarily mean strikers, but just load more attacking players into that front setup, which he's not been doing. Um, and he has got that option on the bench. So that would, that that's what realistically I think could happen. I can't see him putting two up top. But I think realistically, he can look to push his system 20 yards further forward. Dave, we have gone from the first half of the season, and I did mean to get this stat ready, but I went back to bed, so I didn't do it. Um, but we In the first half of the season, pre-Christmas, we were almost scoring for fun, weren't we? Uh, I think we, we got a goal in almost every game. Uh, it, it's literally just dried up, but it's the same team. Well, the forwards weren't scoring for fun, were they? It was Mavadidi, well, I suppose they're their forwards, but Dewsbury Hall, 
Um, well, they classed us forwards. On well, the, yeah, I know they are. So, they so, wouldn't so, class them as forwards. They so were playing 4 3 3 then, in that idea, mm. which we're clearly not. Um, no, they've run out of ideas because we've been sorted. You know, it's not once you see us play a couple of times, you know how we play. So you, you pick your team and you play your game accordingly. And if you notice, I don't know if it was obvious that on the night, Kate, but to me, Plymouth just crunched in the midfield, a bit like Millwall did. Um, Mavadidi hadn't got a clue, to be honest. He he got the ball, did his usual, coming inside, nobody to go to because it was all, you know, there's so many people in there. Um, and that's what happens now. We can't play through the middle like we used to on the floor and then just flick it off and do triangles because they, they're blocked out. We've got no other idea. Um, we're slow. Uh, did you notice um, Ipswich? I know they only drew, uh, but they were pretty quick on everything they were doing. And, and you know, th they should have won that game against Middlesbrough, was it? Uh, but they, you know, they were very unlucky. Um, in fact, Leeds were the same, weren't they, the bits I saw? I mean, Leeds must have had loads of chances and didn't put them away. But they were a bit unlucky. We didn't look like we were going to score. And that's the difference. That's what worried me on Friday night when we were talking. that We didn't look like we were going to score. Um, well, apart from a couple of chances that probably should have put away. But I, I don't know. I don't know. We've. I don't, I don't agree with you so much on the striker problem. Because I think Vardy's record is as good as anybody's in well, uh, as, as you mentioned, as you mentioned that, Dave, to say that he is our number one striker, and we are a team that is going for promotion, and he is the the highest ranked Leicester City scorer in the table, but he can only actually make it into um, is that eighth position? I can't even read. It's that small. Yeah. You know, he is in eighth position now. You know, he has scored um, 14 goals. Uh, Somoza at Blackburn Rovers, who are fighting relegation, has scored 24. Uh, Armstrong at Southampton, who are only in the playoffs, has scored 20. Guy at yeah, Plymouth, okay. Morgan Whitick, has scored 19. Yeah, so Vardy's not so there. Yes, he's, he's, he's out of the four, he scored more goals, but I wouldn't say he's on blinding form. But you look at their goal conversion rate, that's the point. And how many minutes per goal? Vardy is well ahead. I think there's only um, Whitaker at Plymouth that's actually pretty close to him. Um, and I think it's something like, oh no, Sargent. Is it Sargent at uh, Norwich? Norwich? I think he scored a few goals. Um, but they're, they're both around the 35 to 40% conversion rate, which is probably pretty important. And they played like, I don't know, half the games that the other strikers have played. So, yeah, Schmodix has scored 24, 25 goals, but um, his, you know, his minutes per goal are something like, I don't know, three hours uh, or two and a half hours. Uh, but he still Vardy's, scored more. <laughs> well, yeah, but he's played, he's played more. That's my point. He's played a lot more games uh, and he's had more hours, more minutes on the pitch. That's why the minutes per goal is important because I think um, Armstrong has scored, what, 20-odd 20, 20 goals? But it's taken him 170 minutes a goal to do it, whereas Vardy's about 100. You know, well, and, and So the argument's got to be, if Vardy had played more games, would he have scored more goals? He had, but four of those are penalties. So let, let's, well, let's take from open play. Uh, Smodic is 24 from open play, Vardy's 10. Okay. Um, I mean, Kate, is, is it a case of in the first half of the season, we, you know, like like I said on Friday, when Blackpool came up, they went to the top of the Premier League. Uh, they then got relegated. So is it a fact of, you know, nobody was used to us, but the second half, they went, whilst it's the same as we played them last time, we know how to handle this now. There will be an element of that for sure. But like we've said before on this show, we were always going to have a blip. We've just had ours at the very end of the season. You know, no one really talks about Southampton in that when unbeaten in 26 games. 
and I and say for the top three messing things up a bit, they're all but out of it. And that's that's also quite a fall off a cliff. Clubs and teams have blips, and we've just had ours at the crunch time of the season where there's no margin for error and there's no games to play that you could make it back over the next 10 because there's not 10 games left. So it was always going to happen, and it's happened now, and it's also happened at a time where there's added pressure because there is that there is that minimal room for error, really. Mm. I'm just, I'm not saying Vardy, I mean, you know, you look, he scored more goals than uh, our next two put together. And, uh, you know, if you put, um, in fact, he scored the same goals as our other three strikers all added together. So, you know, he's obviously, yeah, he's obviously the better of the three. But that said, you know, none of them are producing the goods that we need, are they, Dave? Well, no. But then he's not played many games, really. I mean, he's he's not had many shots. I, th I think I looked at it and he's probably had half the number of sh shots that the top three strikers in the league have had. Um, let me just make that a bit bigger. So Armstrong, Schmodix and Whitaker. Um, yeah, I think Vardy's had less than half the shots they've had and probably less possession than any of them. We're not getting the ball to him, so why play him is the point. And, you know, that's right. So, OK, so we're not getting the ball to him. Why aren't we? Because the midfield now is so crowded, they can't play that through ball we used to play. So you need three, to play two strikers, one behind he, the other. Three touches he had when he came on against yeah. Plymouth Kate. Yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, I that, think it was something he came like... on 66 minutes, so he had two-thirds of the game and he made three touches. A third of the game, you mean? A third of the game, sorry. Um, yeah, it was the same yeah. against Millwall. I think Millwall, he got, I saw a stat somewhere at the time, he got to 63 minutes against Millwall and he'd had six touches. Mm. Um, we're just not getting the ball to him. The problem is, and I felt it was really prominent on Friday night, was that we have no problem beating that first line through Vestergaard and whoever starts the move at the back. Then it gets to the likes of KDH and Winks that you want them to carry it through the second line and do some, and then you sort of into their box and can do some better penetrative work. But that second line, all the time, players kept stopping, wall, wall up, and then would just pass backwards or sideways. There was like a real block going on where whether it's confidence, whether it's just been so drilled into them to not lose possession. I don't know what it was. There was there was a through ball on from Mavadidi at one point. He made a decent run into the centre part of the pitch. And KDH could have made the the pass, he needed a one-touch pass, but he could have made it. And he just didn't. He stopped, panicked, and then just passed it straight back to Vestergaard. We're not taking those kind of yeah. forward risks that you need to take to score a goal. Every goal is a risk. Of When you score a goal, there's always a risk you will lose possession. But you're not going to score if you don't take those sort of calculated risks. And I just didn't see that. And then your forwards don't get any don't get any ball time then. So that's the issue as well, that you're not you're not having the confidence and the progression in your head to push forward and pass the ball through the second line. Well, you're not going to make any progress. No, no. I mean, Dave, Kate's right, didn't she? We we need to, if you want your strikers to score goals, you've got to get the balls to them. You've got to shoot as well. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I know, I, know this, I know this was contentious on Friday night, but... And like I say, I told you what my rating was for Dakar, so I'm not saying, you know, he's my man of the match. But in 66 minutes, he had 24 touches. In 33 minutes, Vardy had three. Um, so you, you've got, you can kind of see why maybe um, Enzo's going with him because maybe, you know, he's coming back for the ball more and what have you. And you've got to remember, he's 37 Vardy now. He probably can't play as much as we'd like him to. He can't play, you know, 90 minutes <laughs> Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday. But strikers, if they're not scoring, it sticks out like a sore thumb. It's like if a goalkeeper's letting goals in, it sticks out like a sore thumb. We do have to somehow, as Kate said, get this ball. We, we are playing too defensively, aren't we? Yeah, I mean, we, it's just so boringly negative. Uh, because I think Kate got it there that everyone's too scared to make a mistake. Mm. So, you know, it's you're not going to create anything like that. So you can't really, you know, we're almost reluctant to go too far forward. There were times on Friday when 
the wingers did get down the line, there's nobody in the box or no. one striker or one player or whatever in the box. Everybody else was still, you know, back there worried about losing a goal. Dave, uh, you, you watched the game as I did uh, on the telly and I, I saw Mavadidi get down the line. He'd got past the defender to the line now, surely as a winger, his first thought should be to get across into the box. All right, mm -hmm. maybe nobody's there, but get it into the box. It might come off somebody and fall for a striker. But he didn't. He tried to get it on his right foot and cut back in and ended up losing the ball. Yeah, because people know that's what he does. Mm. But well, I say, should he not, you know, uh, and I see Fatou do it as well, always coming inside. They're not getting the crosses in for the strikers, are they? That's because you play a right footer on the left wing and a left footer on the right wing. Mm. It's inevitable, isn't it? I mean, that's that's the whole point of playing them there, so they cut inside. Mm. But yeah. how valuable is a player who can go around the outside and, you know, be like Guppy used to do, you know, you know, take the ball around the outside, get a cross in, lay it back six yards out, bang. So you, I, I, in my head, I am now singing that song. What was it? <laughs> you know the one I mean, go round the outside. Round the outside, yeah, I know. Malcolm do McLaren, that. double duck. We do, we do that all the time here. As soon as I said it, I thought, oh, shit, what have I said now? Because yeah. everybody's going to be going round the outside. Round the you, outside. You, you, saw, you saw the smile come on my face, didn't you? It's, uh, I, thought, I, thought, I, thought that was, I thought that was wind. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, you'd have heard that. <laughs> but we seem to have lost, uh, lost their faith, and that is disappointing because the fans started off were brilliant again on Friday. I think, Kate, is, would you agree on that? I yeah, know, I saw your cool comment at the start of the game. I saw your comment about it getting very toxic, but that's what happens in away games, isn't it? The way we've been playing. Yeah, um, it was an, it was another level for me on Friday, which is why I tweeted about it because I felt some of the people around me were quite frankly disgusting. Is it the um, young blokes? No, really. Okay. Yeah, I mean there have been youngsters. I mean, I, I tore a guy, I knew one in the queue for some crisps the other week because he was so rude, yeah. and I just decided to <laughs> yeah. to just yeah pull it pull a few strips off him. Um, but well, we, yeah, we it, have, so it was 50, 60 year olds behind me. My in the week on Friday, and some of the comments, and I don't, I don't even know where to go with some of those comments. They were just okay. disgusting. And at the end of the day, I get frustration, and I, I know we've covered this before about booing or whatever. I understand venting frustration, but this got personal. It got abusive, and at the end of the day, we all want the same thing. Yeah. They don't go out there to be shit. They don't think, you know what? I can't be asked today. Of course they don't. They're professional. I do. I do. I do every weekday morning on the breakfast <laughs> show. I know. I think I'm we all want the today. same thing. I'm, I very rarely disappoint Kate. I love <laughs> <laughs> but we all want the same thing, and I just think some of the comments that were made, do you that I think Daka could hear because they were shooting towards the second half, and he wasn't twenty yards from us. Hmm. And I just he think pretty upset. On the bench, it was it was a bench. tough gig for that that and I'm not but also but at the same time yeah we were in full voice at the start of the match and I think before they scored the first 20 minutes we looked really good yeah, yeah. we were doing some positive stuff I thought Winks was pulling the strings nicely in the first 20 minutes and then I have no quibble with conceding a goal it happens it's part of the game it was flipping annoying on on Friday night because woo I could see what was going to happen he was not tight enough he was too casual and he wasn't really? tight enough and I and you and you score a goal the guy scored a goal I don't think woo to be honest give the gave the guy the respect he deserved these are professional footballers in the same division for good reason they're not going to be much in it they're going to be marginal differences in talent and quality but what I didn't like was then your backs are up against it because Plymouth did change their tactics a bit. But you've just got to keep playing that progressive football. You've got we've, we've got the ability to play quick one touch stuff to really join the watch along on the Friday within that first 20 minutes. And I actually said what I can see happening is what Leicester always do. Don't score when we're on top. And we'll get beaten, you know, on a breakaway. Yeah. And I think I said that at about 18 minutes. Oh, so it's like, your fault. Okay, now we're It was, we know my, it was my fault. It was my fault. Uh, but yeah, we don't we don't seem to take advantage of that. 
Because there was times when Plymouth still were going for it. They they got possession and they lumped it up the pitch. And we quickly turned the ball over. And Plymouth are out of shape. The shape's gone. So bomb it on, counter-attack, one touched up. We've got some really quick, pacey players. But we just seem to wait, let Plymouth get back in their shape, pass it to Vestergaard, pass it to Wig. That's the frustration that builds within the fan base then. Like, how, just counter-attack. The opportunity was there quite a few times to just counter-attack and we didn't. Dave, do you remember the great escape year? And I know we've had the, whether it's yourself or Brad, possibly I've had this conversation with, but I can remember I had a season ticket then and I can remember watching Leicester and our strikers were scared to shoot. And the only guy that would come on and have a go was Cramerich. And he'd come on and he'd shoot from anywhere and he'd hit somebody's arse and just go wide or whatever. But everybody else got up to sort of the penalty box line and then passed it across. They would they didn't seem to want to shoot, and it's almost like we're suffering with the same disease now. Yeah. I don't know, mate. I really don't. I can't understand it. Um, you know the, the only thing I can say is that it's pure panic that and Leeds have got it and Ipswich have got it. Yeah, and yeah. Liverpool, nobody wants Liverpool to get out, do it, they? And Arsenal have got it. I mean, I've never seen anything at this time of season like that's happening now with the Premier League and the Championship. Yeah. Um, because, you know, Liverpool to lose at home, Arsenal to lose at home, Leicester lost away, Leeds yeah. lost at home. I mean, it's ridiculous. It really is. Kate, do you but, know what day it is tomorrow? The 16th of April. Tuesday. <laughs> Dave got it wrong this time. Uh, so do everybody check out my um, my oh, blog it's all about on me, isn't it? the BBC. <laughs> the BBC.com. Um, sorry, BBC.co.uk forward slash Leicester City. Uh, it's Tuesday Fan Voice. And I've written it this week. And my last two lines, and I shouldn't really say this because I didn't say anything before it goes out, but my last two lines were... Um, if you're a neutral, this is a great season in the championship. Unfortunately, I'm not a neutral. And that's the thing, isn't it, Dave? Like, yeah. if you don't support one of those three teams, you're loving it because, like, you know, it's going to go right down. Where if we'd have been carried on the way we were, it would have been particularly boring. And Mark O'Brien says Simon should get on, he can get across in the box. But, Dave, who's, who's in the box to head it on? That's the point you made earlier, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, we could put as many crosses in there as we want and there's nobody there. Um, mm. Unless you've got Iniacho and Vardy in there or Cannon and Vardy. Uh, you've got to get people in the box. because People who can head it, basically, isn't it? Well, yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, but also, there's been that... quite a few opportunities where Winks has picked it up or Ndidi has, although I wouldn't really be a fan of Ndidi shooting. KDH picked it up quite a few times. Mavadidi had clear sights of goal and they just aren't taking the shot outside the area. Now, I'm not saying it's necessarily going to go in because you rarely score goals from outside the area on the regular, but just get it on target, hit it hard enough. The keeper has to parry it and who knows where it ends up. It takes a deflection off a defender like the Leeds goal and it goes in the back of the net. We just don't do that enough either. Mm. And, Kate, um, we, like you say, it's getting worrying that, you know, we're talking about indeed you having shots and all the, you know, uh, and a header, and he can't really head it either. Where are the strikers? On the bench. You know, <laughs> this is the thing. But look, well, it's, Kate, the, it's me... a system that it's really odd, isn't it? It's a system that doesn't use the strikers. Yes, yeah. Uh, but look, I mean, Man City did it for a season and won the bloody league, didn't they? Uh, as of as of this weekend, as of Saturday when I did this, um, these are our goal scorers. Vardy, like we say, um, 14. And you can see the, um, the, the red ones there are the strikers. Uh, and Thomas Cannon, I feel so sorry for him. Because when, I mean, you remember, do you remember, um, Dave, do you remember Brad's purple patch? Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, where well, Dave had a wet patch. Uh, had a purple patch, and he said, "Whenever we bring, brought we brought Dakar in before Afghan, he had a great little purple patch." 
he then went off to AFCON, and before that, sorry, Kells did, and then and, and Bardi had earlier in the season. Then we brought Cannon in because we had all we had, and he had a purple patch. But they don't seem to, Dave. Surely, when somebody stops scoring, what do they say that the sign of insanity is keep repeating the same thing, hoping that it's going to work next time? Yeah, uh, but if you don't give a player a chance, he won't score. It's my point with Vardy. Why well, bring him on with 10 minutes to go? What are you expecting? You well, know, if you do he's... bring him on, change the system well, to suit him. Yeah. Oh, yes, Bill Wall, Daka came on at 88 minutes to do yeah. two up top. What is the point in that? <laughs> yeah, absolutely no point. Yeah. Absolutely not. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't mean... even leave it till they scored because if we haven't scored in the first, I think I said Friday before the game, we really need to score in the first 10, 15 minutes. We really do. Because then we'll be we'll be a bit calmer, we'll have settled down and we'll go on from there. But we didn't, and that's the same thing happened. But instead of leaving it till they score, 60 minutes, of, was that Brendan time, wasn't it? 65 minutes. Um, let's do it early. I thought he might change it at half time because that first half was so bad from our, from where I was watching it from. I'd have changed two or three players at half time. I wouldn't have left it till it was 65 minutes or anything, or you know, just get them off and get somebody else. There you go, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that was directed at you. <laughs> mum, and, mum and dad will be listening and watching, Christopher. Hello, Mitch and Mrs. Blakey. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I never Kate. said it, you said it, mate. Uh, but Kate, the, the, Brad made this very, we did the review show, and if you haven't seen it, do go and check it out. Um, it's under uh, it's under reviews or it's under the pick. And uh, Brad did, I say, uh, all the tactical review from from the weekend, uh, from the Friday night game, and he actually came up with a plan B that isn't a lot different to what we've got, but subtle changes that would accommodate a different style of play. Because all we're seeing is, well, one striker's not scored. We'll put another striker on. But if you're keeping the same build up it's still not going to work is it no the like for like subs surprisingly <laughs> just create the same issues except this time they're yeah. not the starting 11 they're the second choices um yeah i think i do think that enzo is starting to struggle from analysis paralysis where you're thinking too much, you're trying to force it too much, you're playing it like a game of chess rather than a game of football and sometimes you've just got to go hell for leather and yeah, just like your pants are on fire basically, just play with some urgency but for for the duration, like try and, try and phase it in and out, sometimes you will need slower play but sometimes I'd love to see us mix it up more and have some really intermittent fast play which we just don't seem to do. Um, but interestingly, I was speaking to a Leeds fan on Friday and he was saying that their fan base, for exactly the same reasons, is starting to criticise Farka in terms yeah. of late subs, um, doing the same thing over and over again, slow build-up play, lacking of intensity. Um, and, I, you know, we talk about Enzo being stubborn, but I think that's just because we're overly critical of our own manager. I think every manager is stubborn with their own philosophy. Genuinely, I do. Um, well, that's, in a way, that's that, what you want, isn't it? Remember yeah. in, in the Great Escape, yeah, you, you couldn't <coughs> find, you know, you couldn't work out who was going to be playing. They scored If they scored two goals, they'd be dropped the week after. Yeah, absolutely. So there's an element of that. Um, I just feel like something's not quite ticking with the players at the minute. I don't, I don't question Enzo's system and the way, the way it can work because it's done us really, really well. It's just there's something going on with the execution at the moment, and that's where they're in the they're in the changing rooms for an hour after the match on Friday, and maybe that's where some home truths were said. Um, oh really? Yeah. Oh, didn't know that. He, he didn't come out for his press conference for a good a good long time because they were in there for an hour with the door locked. Oh, good. But Kate, Which is what you want to hear? It is. It is. But Kate, two subs when you one nil down chasing promotion. You've got you've five on the bench, you tired, and you've mentioned that there was tiredness. Mm. <laughs> I, think, I think Plymouth made five substitutions, didn't they? Yeah, and even if. Even if we're cruising at one or two nil and it, 
you still mm. wanted to push on for more. You needed to bring, you just want fresh legs. It's a time of the season where we've got such an intense period after this little break we've got of eight days. It's a really, it's loads of cup five. Every single one's a cup final. So if you really believe that people are tired, then, mm. then use those like for like subs to your benefit. It, it, but I don't believe that he, he genuinely thinks the team are tired. I think he just doesn't really know what else to say. And he's just trying to shut down the, the interview as soon as possible because they must hate doing them. I would hate doing them as oh, well. Yeah. But um, Dave, so... I mean, you, you, you look at two substitutions. And I know he said earlier in the season, I'm not going to make substitutions just for the sake of making substitutions. But we're one fucking nil down. We need to win. We, we're trying to get promotion. What the hell? Why have you only put two? We we criticized. I mean, was it Brendan against Brentford that se that last season? Was it the first game, Brentford? Yeah. Two nil up. All the players were tired. We only made two fucking slubs, mate. And he said it was hot, and it was like twenty three degrees. Yes. Yeah. So, Dave, I mean, are the fans right to be getting toxic to 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 Brendan? Uh, to Brendan, by God, to 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 to. Uh, yes, they are. <laughs> yeah, thank you. To uh, that was a Freudian slip. Uh, bring him back. That's what I say. Uh, <laughs> to to Enzo. I don't know about getting toxic. No, I don't agree with that. I think they're right to be angry and confused. I mean, we were on Friday, but we took it out on each other, not on the team, not on the manager. Um, I don't know. A couple of you were taking it out on poor Dakar. No, <laughs> I guess, no, I guess, we, I guess, okay. Yeah, I know you do, but you were wrong. Um, <laughs> but the point, the point hang was, on a second. This, this was Dave. This was Dave to me on uh, on on Friday night. Um, let me just try and find it. Where are we? Uh, here we go. This was Dave talking to me on Friday night. Your opinion is wrong. There we go. <laughs> 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 and he was probably quite right as well. Um, but I, I never boo at a game. Hmm. Never booed. As I've never left early. Um, and I understand why you used to, Chris, because you had further to go than I did. I only had to get out to Surrey or, well, actually, yeah, I'd normally stayed there. But um, And it's a long journey back. And when it takes an hour to get out near the ground in the car, hmm. uh, it's frustrating. But I never booed. I didn't applaud, mm. but I didn't boo. And and I think as Kate's right, players don't do it on purpose. No. Um I, I, I have I would will... love to have put those two away, but yeah. it's just not good enough to do it at the moment. I understand moment. I understand booing. No. I have I have never actually, and I'll state this now, I have never actually booed at a match. But I that do is, understand it. What I don't like... Only for the referee, anyway. What I, well, that's, that's a different matter. That, that's allowed. Uh, He's got a family what, as well. Yeah. What I don't, <laughs> um, what I don't uh, agree with is the, the toxicity towards a player while they are playing. I was at the Bournemouth away game for the FA Cup and the Bournemouth fans were absolutely having a go at... Um, a Bournemouth striker. I can't remember who, who it was now, uh, but he was obviously struggling with confidence, what have you. And every, he was being, he was literally was not only being booed, but he was taking a lot of um, name calling and criticism whenever he missed or he got a ball and obviously ended up not scoring. Eunice in that game, like I say, he couldn't hit a barn door with a banjo that night. But what he did when he got the ball was he ran at the defence. And if, you know, they don't. If, if he'd been able to work out where the goal was, he, we might have won more comfortably. But they daren't tackle him in case they brought him down. But not once did you hear the Leicester players, away fans, booing Eunice, which was why I'm surprised. Is it, is it do you think, because the, the, the more hardcore when, when it's away fans, Kate? Yeah, absolutely. It's much more hardcore. It's much more vocal, good and bad. Um, mm. And but Thank you, mate. That was it, Billings, yeah. On Friday, I felt that where the things that I heard, it was all about entitlement. It was very entitled that we should just be able to do it. It's as easy as that. It's as easy as one, two, three. We can, we should just be able to do yep. this. 
Plymouth are a League One team, somebody was mm-hmm. saying behind me. No, they're not. They're as much of a League One team as we're apparently a Premier League team. We're in yeah, we're in the for a reason. Yeah, and Plymouth, so. don't forget, dicked on Norwich 5 0 earlier in the year. These they aren't mm. a poor team, they're just in a poor form. And and that's what you need to remember. And I I say that to the players as well as the fans. Like I don't think Woot respected that guy as much as he should have mm. done. He should have absolutely just booted it out for a throw in. Do you know what? Wes and Hoos are probably not as pacey <laughs> or aware defenders as what Woot can be sometimes. But they'd have just cleared that out for throwing because they do the simple things right and the simple things first and foremost. And yeah, I just don't I just don't need to hear it. It was really counterproductive. Um and also, from my point of view, we discussed this on Friday night as well. It's not Dacca's fault he got picked. Yeah. <laughs> Enzo, I felt, put him out like a lamb to the slaughter, particularly second half. I don't think he should have come out. And that that's, was virgin on cruel for me. I, um, I, I've said this, um, I think it was on the re- review. Sometimes you've got to look at players and you've got to think, for their own sake, they need to be dropped, you know. I think Pickford, although he was he was England's number one, whether it was like last season or the season before, he was struggling, and he was dropped for a few games just to get the crowd off his back and to give him some respite. And I think Daka needs that, doesn't he? Yeah, I mean, especially because that last shot that went wide at the end, just before he got subbed, that was right in front of us. And he got some abuse, and I knew he heard it. I knew he heard it. And what do you think? That's that's just so damaging to him. It's so damaging. He doesn't go out there to do that. If he could have buried it, he would have buried it. Yeah. Um, and also, like a good point was that that lovely finish he did in the first half that was offside. Had that been onside, it might have opened the confidence gates up and he might have been able to to finish a few of the others that he got it's all about confidence and momentum but for me I don't think Enzo should have played him because he isn't the sort of character that can tolerate it Vardy doesn't care Vardy doesn't care if he gets stick off the home fans or stick off the away fans he's so thick-skinned and he's almost his own worst critic isn't he he'll probably punch himself in the face if he missed some of those chances like we've seen him do before but Dakar's just he was a lamb to the slaughter on Friday and I'm not really down with that no, I mean Dave. Just while you nipped off for a wee, there we were no, saying. I <laughs> Hopefully, that's not the, the what you, you, you wee that you're drinking. Um, well, you're not clear, so I hope so. <laughs> um, we were just saying then. You, you, you made. I think you touched on this comment earlier, and I saw this as well, and I commented on it in the watch along. Dacker's face when he was subbed off, when he sat down, he covered his face with his shirt. Yeah. And he's probably looked the most miserable I've seen him since he's been at this club. Yeah. And we're saying sometimes players need to be dropped for their own sanity. And I think Enzo needs to... And, I, and we'll go through the individual figures in a minute and it kind of backs up possibly why Enzo's picking him. But he needs to look at that and have a duty of care and go, he's not scoring, the player's getting him on his back. I still have faith in him, but he needs that break. <clears throat> well, he's not scored for a few games, has he now, either? No. Uh, so, uh, and you go back to the minutes per goal and that sort of thing and goal conversion and whatever else it is. That's got to be the telling factor. Um, but do you, chances... him, do you drop yeah, him, you drop Dave, him. to give him that break? Or maybe even drop him to the, you know, the under 21s, whatever it is. I don't know what the next step down is. And, and play him as an overage in there and let him get his confidence back. I, I don't wonder what Kells has done to upset the manager. Well, Kells apparently, um, what what as far as I understand, what Enzo came out and said was that Cannon is one for the future. Um <laughs> And I, I want players, obviously, that are committed. So I suppose Kells is out of contract. Not his fault that he can't sign with the way things are at the moment. So do, well. do you think Daka would, would benefit from some time with the under-21s just to get his confidence back, just to start bagging, banging, hopefully banging some goals in? No, I don't. I think he'd, he'd be better off on the bench or having a rest. I think on the bench, he's still in the first-team squad. Um, he's he, still can still come, he can still play on the bench, though, can't he? Well, 
I, I don't think it would do him any favours. I think the problem now is that we're so late on in the season that he shouldn't have picked him because you know he's he's been out of form for seven, eight, nine games who have not scored a goal. Mm. <clears throat> and um, you don't pick him. You you pick a player who wants it desperately. Mm. Cannon's that player. Vardy's that player. Yeah. You don't yeah. pick somebody who I think, I mean, you kept going on on Friday about he scored four in Russia. Well, to be honest, anybody could have. You know, it, it wasn't a difficult game, was it? These are difficult games against teams that are fighting like rubbish to get to stay up. You, you need to have some bottle to play in these sort of games. And um, Woot Faze and Dakar and one or two others haven't got it. And that's the problem. I mean, why was... Um, What's his face dropped? Uh, Callum Doyle. I, I, he was almost my man of the match in against. Was it Millwall or somewhere? Um, what, what, what was wrong with him? I mean, why? Certainly I mean, not for pace. No, we don't know. Kate, your thoughts on dropping him down to, to give him some game time with the under twenty ones? He definitely, he definitely needs to be dropped. Um... Yeah, I mean, if you can still keep him scoring with the under twenty ones or can retain his match fitness, I don't, I don't know. I really don't know what the answer is with him. He's, he, I don't think he's got the ability that we all want him to have. He's not got the potency about him either. He's not got that, um, that venom that we like to see in a striker. I think Kel's got it for sure, and I think Cannon's got it, but Daka just almost seems a bit too polite. So. But now we've got the problem is that you've got you've doubled down on that in terms of his confidence is completely gone as well now, which is an issue. So sometime out of the first team for sure, I don't know what being in the under twenty ones would necessarily do for him. Um, I don't. I don't know. If, if he if he just rediscovers where the net is and starts, I know it's late in the season, so it yeah. probably is too late. Well, hopefully um, we've got four, four games, games to go. Left, hopefully, yeah. Well, you know. exactly. So I'm but just thinking, but I don't mind him coming on in the last no. 10 minutes like he did before because he's so fast. And, mm. you know, in that when we tried the two up top formation last week, it, it kind of worked. Like him and Nacho created, created a lot in those seven or eight minutes that they were both on the pitch together. You, like you, that, you said, though, gone. like it's, it's a confidence thing. And I just think if you stick it, it doesn't matter if you're scoring against Granny's 11. You know, if you play a game and you score two or three in that game, you suddenly get that confidence back again. It just gives you that extra spring. That that's all my thoughts were. Yeah, that's, with that. that's what training's yeah. about, though. That's what you go out and do your training and play your proper. Well, is it? Is, 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 is it training the same as playing well, a competitive match? I mean, you know, the defenders may not go in on a tackle no, because they don't want to injure their own player, or no, 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 no. It, it's not the same but it's, it's as close as you can get he's probably more beneficial playing against our defenders than it is playing against kids which is what he'd be doing um you know he, he needs to harden up a little bit i mean i i've no little things i've noticed vardy will chase the goalkeeper down um and he'll go he'll run out like a headless chicken around the pitch for the ball daka strolls up you know i noticed that's it a lot on on Friday. He won't close the guy down. He's kind of thinking about it, but he gives the goalkeeper enough time to do something with it. He should be right on him. Yeah. Just, quite, just got to do what he can do. He doesn't do what he can do. Like There's only so much you can affect from that side of the pitch. And if he can just... He's not going to block the keeper's kick. You're not going to get no. that point. But like you say, giving, him, giving the keeper more time gives the keeper the option of where he wants to play it, short, long, indifferent, whatever it is. But if you just press him, he has to kick it long. He, he's yeah. not going to pick out a pass if he's under pressure, because he can't, unless it's really close. But that he, he just needs to do and control what he can do a bit better. Yeah. The last, didn't he, the block, didn't he block one once early on in the game? Didn't he actually close him down and block it for a goal I kick? Remember now. Yeah. I vaguely remember that but it doesn't matter whether he blocks it like you say he's just got to make they've got to make the effort look interesting 
Yeah. We must do. We're going to move. We're going to move on now with with some uh, facts and figures. Last question here, Kate. Before we do move on, um, we used we, we. I remember having conversations like this about Yannick Vestergaard, and suddenly, wow, he's turned different different style of play, uh, and suddenly he's probably you know you could even argue player of the season. Uh, he'd certainly be, I think, in 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 the running. Whether he'd win it or not is another matter. Could that <laughs> the be irony that... that you said in the running and the guy can't run. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, <laughs> that's a good point. Um, but but yes, do do you think that Dakar, you know, if, if and I'm not saying that Enzo's going, and I don't think he should go, that if if the system was changed it would suit Dakar more than the system that we're playing now? Or do you think we've just got to say, look, let, you know, we, we, we bought a Baden? Yeah, I think it's one of the ones that we bought a Baden because I think any new manager coming in isn't going to do two up top because no one seems to do it anymore. And I think that's where Dakar is probably most effective, where he's not the main lone striker. Um, I just don't think he's quite ruthless and cutthroat enough for what a top-level striker needs to be that's that's my interpretation I'm always left wanting a bit with him like when Cannon comes on the pitch and the Cannon's figures you know that he's not scored loads I know he's not had much opportunity but he hasn't scored loads but when Cannon comes on the pitch I just feel like there's so much more direction with him and mm. um intent than I get with Daka. Daka covers some yards and I think some fans will see it as he's he's hold up games fairly good or his pressing games all right I feel like he just chased his shadows myself he never really gets within a couple of yards and I don't think I've ever seen him make a tackle because he doesn't get close enough to do it the ball's gone I think, I think with Cannon it's a case of you're releasing somebody you know who, who wants to go you know he's not played so when he does get the chance he wants to make an impression but we're going to look at facts and figures uh, straight after this <laughs> Now, courtesy of our friends at whoscored.com, uh, they have, well, I have got the following information on our four main strikers, just to compare. So, we're going to start with uh, Tom Cannon. Uh, so far this season, he's played 21 times. Sorry, he's age 21. Sorry, I should say. He's age 21. So, he's the youngest of the four. Uh, he's played 409 minutes. Uh, only got three goals and one assist. Shots. Now, this isn't goals. This is shots per game, 1.2. His pass success rate is 68.5%. And his uh, rating, because obviously they rate all the players after every game, average rating is 6.34. He doesn't come out top on any of those. And it's probably not surprising because he, he, the poor guy's hardly played. Um, but Dave... I actually picked Cannon to be starting on on Friday night in my uh, uh, before the team was announced when I did a preview um, with Luke. I, I I said I wanted Cannon up front. Um, I still do now against West Bromwich Albion. He did it for um, uh, Preston last season, game in game out for them. This you know last season. Why isn't he? What you know? Surely we've got to give him a chance now. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. I've been thinking that for weeks. I don't know why. Three mm -hmm. goals, 409 minutes. I know it's only three goals, it's only 400 minutes, but it's still a better minutes per goal than most of the top in scorers. Fairness, the in fairness, none of, them are, none of them are brilliant, again, but that's down to the style that we well, play. No, no you know, I'm that's saying, that's, that's, not, bad. that's yeah. not bad minutes per goal. Yeah. You know, when you look at the others in the league, um, in the championship, shots per game's not great, but mm. you know that's the way we play. You're right. Yeah. Um, but the the fact is that he won't play him. Um, he didn't play Kelechi. Uh, it, <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it. He won't play two up front. He won't do anything that we think he should do. But then, well, he he's the manager, the I guess, and and yeah, it, yeah. It, he gets he sacked <laughs> if it goes wrong. Um, I agree with we'll... you on the um, stubbornness because oh, I, yes. I managed to side once and I thought yeah. I was right. So, I, you know. I, I mean, yeah, I, I don't agree with you. don't like what I'm doing, I'll go. Well, I'm sorry, mate. Maybe that's what you heard on, on Friday night. 
Um, yeah. Your view of that, Kate, of those stats? He, he's he's got to be given more of a chance now, hasn't he? Yeah, I don't really understand the point of buying him if we're not going to um, use him when the others aren't doing so well. I mean, you accept that when you're young in this game and you're trying to break through into the first team that you have to wait for your either dead man shoes or or injuries or whatever it is to get your chance or people being off form. And none of the other three strikers are on form. And yet Cannon's been given the least amount of minutes. The only thing I can think of the reason behind that is for the, whatever reason, this injury and this stress fracture in his back that he had over the summer Needs he was long on the bench, though, wasn't he at Plymouth? Yeah, but I mean, he can't play ninety. No, but then none of the strikers are very, very rare. Vardy's played ninety a couple of times. That's very, true. very um, rare so that any of the strikers just play ninety. Something relying like that. Mm. Um, and is he young? He's twenty-one. Young these days. Yeah, it seems to be waiting to break into the first team as a regular. There's not many twenty-one-year-old mm. regulars, I would think. When we've the got the okay. choice we have of strikers. If we're saving him and we've got him on a long contract, so if we're saving him for next season, that's the Premier League. Surely this is this is where he's like I say played well last season for hey, oh, Dave's Dave's Dave, Dave scrolling through his porn files here. No, <laughs> I'm gonna have to come on the on the mobile because even despite the fact I got it plugged in, my battery's down to ten percent on this poxy iPad. Poxy. Poxy iPad. So I'm gonna I to... I, that I knew make. I know I know <laughs> Apple do them and, and I didn't know Poxy did them. Yeah. But yeah, to me, to me, I just I just don't understand this. And you know, look, Brendan Rogers hung himself on his stubbornness. I'm just worried that, that Enzo might as well. But Dave, I'll come back to you. I'll let you do do you want to do that first? No, I've no. got 10 10 percent. Well, you know, that Kate, Kate's happy with 10%, I'm sure. Good enough for me. <laughs> well, yeah. That, that says it all. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm good here. at assists. I'm good at assists. Yeah. So. Um, 1,074 minutes played, six goals, two assists, <laughs> 1.4 shots a game. All the shots per game are disgusting for our strikers. Yeah. But I go back to the fact that it's the system. The pass rate, he's best on his pass rate, 85.2% pass rate. So he's best on that. And his average score was 6.49. Um, he's leaving. Wait, we don't know if he's leaving. Uh, he's not going to be a sellable asset if he does go. Um, but, you know, he's another one we've, we've, we've let run down. And all this sort of, well, because it's the EFL and all this, it's bollocks. We've had plenty of time to try and time down to a new contract. Enzo earlier in the season said, oh, it's too early to be talking about that straight as soon as he'd just done it with Hamza. Um, I'd have liked to have kept him, to be honest with you. If he's not going to play, what's the point? Oh, no, I agree on that. But no, to me, he would be being played, you know. Well, he should be, but... Uh... The way the manager wants to play doesn't allow two strikers. So no matter what we do, it's going to be a one-off, one-on. And that's the whole problem. And I, I don't know what it is with managers now. They just want to play one up front. Whether they expect midfielders to actually turn into strikers, I don't know. Um, it just doesn't make sense to me. Kate, your thoughts on Kells? Could he play that? That role that Brad said just behind the, the, the front striker? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I quite like him in that position as well. He likes to come to come deep, really, which is good mm. for Nacho. Um, but again, the shots per game, I think Andy's just said down below as well, like the shots per game is absolutely horrendous. Considering yeah. how many goals we've scored, we've, we've scored the most in the division, haven't we? And it's absolutely unbelievable. 1.4 shots per game. And that's not even whether it's on target or not. Hmm. But, uh, yeah. Oh, it's, like, it's, it's I have scored like more goals Kells. than us. Uh, Southampton have scored more goals than that's us. Right. We haven't with scored third. many for a while, have we? You know. um, no, it yeah, is. I think, okay. I, I, it's just disappointing. I think it's the problem with the club at the minute where we're not getting rid of, of Deadwood. If you're not going to play Kelechi... 
then sell him, get him, get something for him rather than just pay his wages and then lose him on a free. It's absolute business. It's the business nightmare situation that we've created for so many players that are being paid that we don't use. It's nothing to do with injury. Does this sound familiar, Kate? Don't want this uh, this time last year. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. And I just, I just don't understand it. I, don't, I would, I would much rather Nacho than Daka. His pass rate, eight, he's the only one of the four strikers that's got a pass rate in the 80s. Yeah, well, he ain't passing for the goal, is he? No, 85.2. So what I'm saying is, agreeing with Brad, don't tell him I said that, but agreeing yeah. with Brad to play him off that front strike. Well, look, who can remember when Rogers had an epiphany and didn't have anybody free? Uh, in, sorry, Vardy was injured, sorry. So he played Kells up front. Then when Vardy came back for the end of the season, they actually played the two of them together. And they were like, for that that period, they were the most lethal strike force in the Premier League almost. He can play that role. He likes to come deep. And he, Kate, for a big man, he has got a nice touch. Yeah, yeah, he has, yeah. I like, I'd love to see it more. I just, I just don't think it's going to happen, which... Is the manager's prerogative, but I just still don't think he's playing his best, his best striker at all. I understand that Vardy can't play ninety minutes, and he doesn't like he's, he doesn't look like he likes any strikers to play for ninety minutes. Sixty or seventy is where what he needs from them. And Kelechi with bells on is better than Daka. What we need, um, I just don't understand why he's siding with Daka so much. Like, I get that he might follow instructions and come deeper to get the ball. We'll see what his stats are in a minute, I guess, with pass completion. Or I just I can't get my head around it. And if he starts him on Saturday, he's got a real uphill battle with the fans at home. Like, yeah, it won't. Hey, hey, I'm going to just have to say this to you. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> so, yeah, right, I'm almost scared to do this. Hang on, I'm going to do this next one from under. Can the I just table. before you do that, while you're down there, um, <laughs> uh, Daka played with Iniacho at Brighton, and we scored within ten seconds. Now, what followed wasn't very good, but you know, the fact <laughs> was, yeah, he played two up front, and it worked. We looked really dangerous for probably. 15, 20 minutes of the game there. Mm. And then they scored. I mean, Brighton, to be fair, were blooming good that day as well. They should have had five or six, I think. But it did. It can work, and we know it, and we've done it. So why won't it work now against lesser players? players well, that's, what, less... that's what I said, you know. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, it, it did work that time for Rodgers, but then the next season he went back to, to, to one up front. Look, I'm going. I'm going to. I'm going to risk it for a biscuit, um, guys. If you don't see me in two minutes, you know I am hiding. We're going to look at Pats and Daka. <sighs> right here we go, guys. So Pats and Daka, twenty-five years old. He's played one thousand three hundred and seventy-eight minutes, the second of uh, second most of any of the four strikers. He scored seven. He's got six assists. Uh, shots per game, 1.9, nearly two. His pass rate is 76.6. And his rating, average rating per game is 6.75. Now, Dave, and I'm playing, please accept I'm playing devil's advocate here. He's got six assists, which is more than the other three put together. 1.9, which is the most shots per game of any of the four strikers. Uh, he's got the second highest pass success um, and his rating, the 6.75, is the highest of any of the four strikers as well. What's he doing wrong? Apart from obviously not knowing what the ball has to go in between the, those white bits of wood. Well, his goal <laughs> conversion is not great, is it? No, no. Uh, so that's probably what he's doing wrong. I think he panics when he's in front of goal. Um, he could have had a lot more goals than they could have had about 15 goals, which would have then you'd have said, Yeah, brilliant, but he hasn't. Um, is it this confidence thing, do you think, Dave? Oh, always striking is a confidence thing, yeah. 
no doubt about it. But, you know, as Kate said, Vardy just gets over it, smacks his head on the on the post and tries again. So, you know... We, do, do, you do you remember Dolly the Sheep? How could I forget Dolly the Sheep? <laughs> what you did that night. We had a wonderful <laughs> weekend away together. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <Yeah>. <laughs> you were in Wales at the time, so we're all is forgiven. Yeah. But we need, now, you know? to, we need to be able to clone Vardy. That's the, that's the point I was going to. Uh, we, oh, need, okay. Sorry. we need to be able to clone Vardy, don't we? But Kate, your thoughts on those figures there for Pats? Like I say, number one in assists, uh, number one in shots for goal, number one in the rating. All that matters with a striker is goals. I couldn't care whether his past success was 5%. I really couldn't care less. What matters is his goal conversion rate and his, his XG versus his actual G. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that Daka's XG must be up there with the highest of the four strikers. He's, the big chances he has missed, and I th I'll say this about Vardy as well, Vardy missed some pretty unacceptable shots on goal against Bristol. And those chances the leads one for Dakar I know he also got one ruled offside that game but they're the, they're the things that are coming back to bite us because had we crystallized those golden opportunities this mm. blip really wouldn't have mattered no. we can get we can lose at Plymouth we lost it's okay we because we'd have won against Leeds we'd have won against Bristol that's six points right there we're home and dry Ipswich yeah. twice Ipswich. Mind you, Ipswich was a crappy referee and KDH should have been given a penalty. So yeah, he, there's, there's, mix, there's a mixed bag of decisions there. But yeah. I can really think of in the past couple of months, Daka and Vardy have missed some absolutely golden opportunities and it's just not acceptable. No. Do you can think I just Daka make the... Play... Sorry, Jay. Sorry. Do you think Daka could play that role that we were just talking about for Kelechi behind Vardy or Cannon? No, he's not. He's not um, industrial right. enough. No, you, you agree was, with that, Dave? By the look of yeah, it, yeah, yeah, totally. The only point I was going to make is uh, if I I can still do maths, I'm not sure. That's um, 197 minutes per goal, roughly, um, and that puts him alongside Whitaker. I think it was getting on for 200 minutes a goal. Vardy's like 104 minutes a goal. <laughs> that's on the pitch so that, that to me yeah. it says everything it, it's not how many shots or well it is actually because the more shots you have the more chance you got scoring exactly. but the fact is if you don't play you don't score you know if you don't play you shots can't score worrying. you're not getting off two shots a game well that yeah. is unbelievable yeah i'm shocked to be honest i thought it would be at least three or four these aren't are these on target or just shots generally. But these are just shots. These are right. just shots. I didn't want to. I didn't want to fill it up. I don't think he's got any on target apart from the seven goals. <laughs> and, yeah. I, and I didn't. I didn't put XG up because I've got to be honest with you. Even after all this time, I do not understand XG. What the fuck is it? No, I don't understand what that is either. I thought I had some sort look of. At, um, we're going to look at. I don't know how to calculate it. I no. thought it was like a kiss grope or something like that. Is it or like oh, an XO? No. Yeah. Here we go, Jamie Vardy. Played more minutes. Well, he's 37, and we've got to accept life after Jamie Vardy, and that's the worrying thing. At 37, we're still, I mean, no disrespect to him, but it is, it's wrong that we are still relying on a 37-year-old to get the goals for us. Uh, but look, he is doing um, 15, 1,540 minutes played, more minutes than uh, the, the others, and more than Kells and Tom put together. 16 goals, which, as I say, the others only managed 16 between the three of them. He's got 16 on his own, but he's only got one assist. Now, that really did surprise me. I have to yeah. be honest with you. I thought it'd be higher than that. 1.4 shots per game, which is the same as Kells, but less than Patson. Pass success of 75.5. And the thing with the pass success is that every time I look, I would seem to be watching these games, but he's getting the ball on in the corner. When he should be in the box receiving the ball, why the hell is he not in the box receiving the ball? He's gone out because no one the buggers up there with him, uh, and that's a that's a you know a, not a, a criticism of him because again he's doing what he's got to do. The pass has probably sorry, gone that I'll just finish with. I'll just finish. Sorry, Kate. 
overall rating 6.67 um less than daca but more than more than kells sorry kate you were going to say i was just saying he's having to run to the byline or the touchline to get the ball because the pass has probably gone wayward because we don't pass it into the box we don't he's he has to go and fetch it from elsewhere yeah you don't yeah. make passes into the box. That's that's the if Enzo just looked at the stats of these four people, which I'm sure he's got stats coming out of his ear rolls. He seems like a data kind of person. You are you've got 1.4 shots per game of your striker who scored 16 goals. That that tells you there's just not enough action going on in the striker end of the pitch. There's not enough touches. You like you want a bit more action, do you, Kate? Always want a bit more action there. Always. A bit more touches. <laughs> more than 1.4 per game. That's that's certainly true. Stuart, really oh, what are them guys behind you, Kate? <laughs> <laughs> Sorted you out. He has sorry, Dave. And he's touching it once. I'm sorry. That's absolutely ridiculous. That's The odds are stacked against him to score, not stacked for him. Hmm. You've got to I mean, create, like Enzo's always talking about with KDH, isn't he? One of the things he picked up on when he took over Leicester was KDH didn't get himself in the box enough and he needs to be getting more goals given the position he holds. He needs to apply that to his strikers. Dave, um, I forgot what I was going to ask you now. Oh, yeah. I mean, against West Brom, their number one striker, their top scorer is out. He's banned. He was sent off in the last game. Yes. Whoop. Um, <laughs> we that was my red card, by the way. Oh, was it? Oh, I thought that was like a, a mini sort of woo. <laughs> that was what you were managing. Um, are you going to sing? Soon. Soon. Uh, <laughs> Dave, looking at that, if I don't see against West Brom and German, because it's been like eight days, hasn't it, since we'll have played last time, if yeah. I don't see... Vardy or Cannon starting and the other one coming on. So a combination of those two, I'm just going to wonder what the hell we're doing. Yeah. It has yeah. surely it's no got excuse, to be those two, hasn't it? There'll be no excuse if he doesn't uh, pick one or the other. Um I don't know. I, I think you... the fact he's, he's still going with the wingers. Um bothers me a little bit as well because uh, Mavadidi's run out of ideas now and his head I don't know if it's obvious there but his head looked like it's dropped um, you know the, there was no real he never shows passion anyway unless he scores does he but, but do, you, know, do he, you think because I noticed with, with Mavadidi a lot there's two play, more so than with Fatwood there's always like two players on we don't have the defenders because we have such a high line where the opposition have a lot of players back OK, you could say parking yeah, the ball. Yeah. But they always have seem to be having two on Mavadidi because they've worked out he's yeah. one of our main threats. Put two well, players on him. And anybody's going to struggle against two players, aren't they? Well, if he's going the same way, yeah. And that's what he's doing. He cuts inside so there's people on his inside. They know that. And then they block out this middle bit, which is where, where else we, we normally go through. Hmm. So we can't go through that anymore. So where do we go? Well against was it which home game was it was it Norwich we were crying out to get the ball to the right wing and eventually we did and it looked a little bit dangerous but mm. you know you can't just play the same way all the time because that's what coaches are for they look and study every bit of footage till it gets boring but that's what they do you know you have to come up with something different especially at this time of the season because it's not working and it's not worked for six seven eight games Brad's statistic on Friday was scary how many nils we've had in away games over the last yes. what, month or two yes. or more. Um, we haven't scored a goal. And what you have to ask yourself, why? Well, because we're not creating anything. Yeah, big deal. But then we're not looking to create anything because mm. we get defenders who just stroke the ball across as if it's so casual. It's a training game or just, just a warm-up. And that's what annoys me more than anything. And yeah. and that was why we lost the goal. Kate, your two for West Brom? Because we know, look, we know he's not going to play two up front. We can sit here and we can say, we all want, all three of us want two strikers on. None of us are going to get it. Nobody in the chat, everybody knows they're crying. We're crying out, they're crying out for two strikers. It isn't going to happen. 
We're going to have one on and then one coming on later on. Is it is it Vardy and Cannon for you, or is it another combination? It would be Vardy and Cannon for me. Um, and I think I'd have Nacho on the bench as well. I, I just don't yeah, think yeah. Daka needs to be included this time round at all. I think Daka mm. needs to be one that's sat out. Enzo do, always does say that there's four strikers. Unfortunately, one has to be sat out. So mm. it's Vardy and Nacho for me. And we'll see. We'll see what happens. But he actually wants a, to be signed by somebody. At the end of the, if he doesn't stay with us, he wants somebody to sign him. He ain't playing. Nobody's going to be coming in. If you can get on the pitch and you know create a few or score a few, that's going to help him. Um, yeah. We're going to have a look now at the running, and we're also going to be looking back at Kate's predictions because Kate once said to me when we did the um, the review show of the championship, she said to me, you're really not very good at this prediction game, are you, Chris? We'll have a look, Kate. We'll have a look. Hello, Matt Elliott here. Hi, Alan Smith here. Hey, guys, Ian Hume here. Hi, everybody. Jerry Taggart here. Be sure to watch Chris and Leicester Till I Die TV for all the latest Leicester City news and information. You can also subscribe on YouTube and various social media channels for the latest updates and news on Leicester City Football Club. Come on, you foxes. Indeed. So, <laughs> Dave's getting his porn up again. Um, <laughs> I've got to say, I don't know if it's just me, but when I have you on small screen, Kate, that top, it is definitely flesh coloured. It looks like you're naked. <laughs> you make me feel naked. No, no wonder Dave's uh, like this. What a porn. <laughs> well, we're, we're secretly and it's messaging. Pink. It's pink to make the boys wink. I have a word, Mr. and Mrs. Blakey. Come on, sort her out. You know, get her to put some clothes on. <laughs> but no, not. Uh, yeah, do you remember saying that, Kate? You know, that's that, that Monday night, that was very hurtful. You I said, think yes, I it's... said it tongue in cheek, being no, a bit. No, I don't think you did. It, it cut. Don't it cut. even bring into this bullying business because I know cut. you're going to bully I mean, me back now. You might as well have just booed me. But I mean, I'm not, a I'm not a booer, Chris. We've discussed this. I'm not a booer. I don't <laughs> think it results and proves anything. You're not no. wrong, she said, Chris. You're not very good at this, are you? Well, this is what I Kate has predicted. You. This is what Kate has predicted. No, 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 no. I'll mute you in a minute. <laughs> this is what Kate has predicted. Uh, we, we got them to do, I think it was like the last 11 games after the international break. She predicted we would beat Bristol City. Whoops. Well, Should have done. She predicted, yeah, but we didn't. She yeah. predicted that we would beat Norwich. Well, we did, but she only went one nil, so she got that right. Birmingham, yes. She predicted two one. We won. We won two one. Millwall, she predicted we'd win. Oops. Plymouth, she predicted we'd win. Oops. Kate, you're not wrong. You're not very good at this, are you? But can I just say? Can I just say? That since we did that, which was the 29th of April, was the, the first game that was included. And Kate did it for Leicester, Carl did it for Leeds. Uh, we had Nipswich Town fan and, and the Southampton fan all did their own results. Since then, so in the last uh, one, two, three, five games, Leicester have got six points. Ipswich have got eight points. Leeds have got five points. Southampton have got 11. So I haven't put them up on there, and I wish I had done now, but they've got too many games because they've got an extra game in, in hand as well, so it wouldn't have fitted on. Uh, but we're wrong to really write off Southampton, aren't we, Kate? Yeah, we are, but I genuinely can't cope with them, the team in the mix. <laughs> 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 oh, it makes me feel sick. Um, but, yeah, they're not out of it at all. Especially, oh, it really annoyed me on Saturday that seven minutes of injury time and they scored in 99 minutes. I'm not sure yeah. what that was about. Yeah, right. um, but, yeah, they're certainly in the mix. I mean, fair place to them. We know they're capable of putting a run together because yeah. of what happened at the first part of the season. And it's yeah. going to be... I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad we're not playing them on the last game of the season. Leeds must be absolutely bricking it. To be honest with you, let's be honest, the... the, the, the they can make our game 189 minutes. We still won't bloody score, would we? <laughs> <laughs> Let's 
looking at that, Dave, so the green games are the uh, home games. The red ones are away, just so you uh, know not what the color coding means. Uh, the gold one is just the, the index at the top. Um, we've got three of our four games at home. Um, is that an advantage? I mean, earlier in the season, it probably wasn't, but it probably is now, isn't it? Well, yeah, it should be. It should be. I mean, we're pretty I think... away from home at the moment, aren't we? Well, I think the only people that should be worried are Leeds because Southampton have got what two games in hand on them. If they mm. win them, they're one point behind Leeds now. I no, know. I think yeah. if they win it, if they win it, they go ahead. They, they are. No, they they on they win those two games. Remember, one of those is against us. So yeah. let's let's not pass. They yeah, would be on eighty seven, the same as Leeds. Yeah, but their respect. goal difference is oh twenty seven. Leeds is forty two. So yeah, yeah. so yeah. it's tight enough for them to worry about it. Mm. Um, we've just got to win our home games. Simple. Yes. Although having said that, I probably the away game is probably one of the easier ones. Well, who knows? Depends what well. the team turns up. <laughs> On well, no, paper, but, knows, but then, because... as Brian Club said, you know, we had a good team on paper, and fortunately, yeah. we played on grass. I mean, Preston can either beat everybody or lose to yeah. everybody, which is the whole problem with this damn guessing game about who's going to score what, when, and how. Yes. I've never known anything like it. Um, it, it teams it's beating a, teams that shouldn't it's lose. It's a funny old team. league, isn't it? It's a funny, funny old game, league. Saint. Really yeah. is. Okay. Um, so who, who do you think's got the. Uh, Hardest and easiest run-ins there. Um, oh God, I think Leeds have got the hardest running. I mean, they've what's, got Middlesbrough. Who's Leeds' first game? Sorry, who's that first game? Middlesbrough. But Middlesbrough. Yeah. yeah, I think I feel like Leeds have got the toughest running because QPR are fighting for their lives still. Mm. QPR, you don't know which QPR is going to turn up. Theme, isn't it? Every team's the same. Borough. Middlesbrough could score, you know, do a crackle, or they could be useless. You know, you just don't know. And the same with Cov. Like, God knows what Cov's going to turn up. Yeah. And um, they beat... They were Blackburn. I mean, they, they put five past somebody, then they conceded five. Yeah. yeah. City got five against them, didn't they? Something like that. Yeah, it was. I not it was. I just uh, think, weirdly, the teams that we've got left to play are better footballing sides... And I think we play better against those kind of teams. They're not part of the buses. Um, Blackburn may well be, depending on how... How I don't think they qualify for... No. No, they're just in the middle, are they? I mean, West Brom... They, they are still in a relegation battle, to be honest with you. Oh, Blackburn, relegation, yeah, relegation battle. So, yeah, Blackburn... The last game they, oh, well, I say that's 17th, 49 points, but Huddersfield is in the 22nd on 44. So they're not out of it, really. No, but yeah, I mean, say if we let that Blackburn game go, because we can still lose one game out of those four, and it's completely <laughs> in our hands still. So I would still back us to get do better against the better footballing team. So yeah, I think, it, I think Leeds have got the toughest running, hmm. and I would argue that you could say Ipswich isn't Ipswich are one of the easier ones, I would think. Mm. You'd think well, yeah, I mean they've got Cobb, like you say, they're they're mine. <coughs> well, will they mind? I mean, they've got Man United in the semi-final of the FA Cup. Um, again, you've no idea what Man United's going to turn up. So it could be the awful Man United and we're seeing Coventry in a cup final, or it could be uh, uh so they maybe got bigger fish to fry. Uh, Hull's going to be difficult for them. Uh, Huddersfield, I mean, Huddersfield are right down there. Like I've just said, they're, they're, they're fighting for the survival. So that might not be easy for Ipswich if Huddersfield are, are literally Ipswich still... Have got, Ipswich have got the mind game problem, though, because they don't play for two weeks now. And when they do play, it's late on. Yeah. When they actually come round to play again, Leeds, and I think, I'm not sure about this, but Leeds definitely only have one game left the next time Ipswich play. Mm. So that could really act in their favour or act against them, depending how many points Leeds pick up. Yeah. I'm just talking Blackburn here. They beat Sunderland 5-1 and they lost to Bristol City 5-1. <laughs> I mean, who? no wonder that predictions are all over the bloody place. Yeah, you know it's, what I mean? shit. it's just well, the league. 
We're the same, Kate. We'll only have one game left as well by the time. Okay, yeah, so we'll, that's we'll massive for Ipswich. That is such a mind bender, that is, yeah. for Ipswich. Would you swap, Dave, our running? And then I'll put it, I'll say exactly the same question to you, Kate. Would you swap our running for either Ipswich or Leeds? Normally, no. Oh, but I'm looking at that running there, would no. you? No, no, I wouldn't. But Would you, but then, Kate? No, three home games out of four and we can lose one. That's that's the best you're going to get. When we played Plymouth, Dave, and we were just saying about away form, based on our last five games, Leicester City are 21st in the form table for away games. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that, that make you I, think that, you should change something? Well, yes, but What's the home also, one? What's the home it's, one? it's good that we've only got the one game away. I mean, let's just have a look at this. West Bromwich Albion are in the form table. This is just based on the last five. They're eighth. Southampton are fourth. Preston are further down. Uh, <laughs> I can't find them. I'll find them in a second. Do bear with me, callers. Your call is... Um... Yeah, my oh, Preston are fifth. Preston are fifth in the league, uh, in the form table. And Blackburn Rovers are 13th. Uh, Coventry are... Um, ninth Hull have dropped down recently, they're 12th. Huddersfield are way, way down, uh, in 21st. Uh, Middlesbrough, sixth QPR, um, they're actually 14th, and at the end, they've got Southampton, which we know they are in four. I mean, it could just go anyway. The interesting thing is here, and as a channel. We do not, we do not uh, promote betting at all. But if you do have a bet, and I do have to say this legally, if you do have a bet, please, when the fun stops, please do stop. Uh, it's not it just betting. A, it isn't an answer for anything. But just looking at Sky Bet, um, although I am, I am betting on you two getting together. Um, <laughs> 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 she needs a babysitter. I. I <laughs> I, I, I am going to contact Sky and see what the odds are. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The latest betting for promotion as of today, as of um, 7 o'clock when we started the show. Now, I don't understand betting. I've got to be honest with you. But looking at this, Leicester are still favourites to get promoted at 1 to 10. Ipswich second at 2 to 5. Blimey. Leeds third at 1 to 2. Southampton... Blimey fourth at five to four which if they kick off at five to four will do us a favor because we could have got a couple of goals in before that that's, that, that's pretty strong can i just rest. say that was one a hell of a long build-up to a joke that's the, that's the, oh god i don't like those odds for us at all no. Sorry, I'm still laughing at my own joke. Nobody else is. No, you <laughs> carry on laughing, Chris. I will, I will. <laughs> this is what the crowd want. We've got 4% battery left. Can we get on with it? <laughs> <laughs> As well, the bishop well, said to the barmaid. Yeah. <laughs> get, 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 get some Duracell in your little machine, mate. That'll, that'll, that'll help yeah. you. Um, but yeah. So we're still, we're still favourites to go up. Yeah, you don't believe anything like that. I mean, Those odds we're... were made by people that don't live and breathe Leicester every week. No, no, I just no. thought that as well, Andrew. Like, how can you have three teams that are odds on for promotion? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I mean, it's just they don't want to pay out on any of them. That's the point. That's why the odds are so. Who can forget the five thousand to one days? Indeed. Going to end on this comment. It's simple for us. Win our home games, and we are up. That's that's all we can focus on. Very, very true, Andrew. It's all about very, us. Very true. Uh, it is all about us. It is indeed. Right. Uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I appreciate your support and your help. And the Viagra's That's kicked scary. in, Dave. <laughs> Kate, oh, my God. You know, why do you do this? You know what I'm going to do with it. Uh, well. But, look, Dave, tell everybody what you're up to this week and where they can find you. Well, nothing. Oh, steady. Nothing tomorrow. Well, I am, but I'm doing the breakfast show this week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, on surreyhillsradio.co.uk. But 
I also know my tweeting number. And I should be doing a lot more Twittering as life goes on. So it's, well, it's thank you very much. It's at Dave Smith 31 77 14 65. Thank you. I is, welcome your comments and abuse. Is that new? Because that's not the one I've got. Oh, is it not? Oh, boy. <laughs> Well, it's not the one that Kate sent me anyway. Actually, I might have a few. Oh, you have. God. Kate, I can't find. I can never find it. Have you got his twist? Right, this this, I've got that, pen and paper, Dave. Pen and paper. Popped, this is the one that popped up earlier when I was looking on the, the radio tweet, tweeting, Twitter, whatever. No. Let no. me just find you. No, I just finished it. <laughs> When you were like my tweeting numbers. <laughs> I know, bless him. <laughs> it's all a mystery. <laughs> Your whole life's a bloody mystery, according to Kate. <laughs> right, followers, Dave. Ooh, I'm a follower. You are. Well, we know that. You parked outside our house every night, mate. No. <laughs> Cost me a fortune in petrol. Please. <laughs> I can't bloody find it. Didn't you tweet me and tag me in something earlier? Yeah, that's all the girls say. Oh, hello. 317714. That's what that's the one you've just said. Yeah, 317714465. Yeah, that's the right. one that, that, that Chris tagged you in on. There you go, you see, I do know it. No, it's easy to on, remember at the time. On. What I tagged you in oh. on. Oh well, no, yeah, no. What he said was why I thought it was different because it's oh, you said Dave, Dave Smith. SM. It's Dave S M. Yeah, oh, not that's Dave. A... Yeah. Oh, that Dave S M three one seven seven one four six five. Now that's his age. I accept that, SM, <laughs> and I accept that he likes S and M. Yes, <laughs> well. Yes. I'm very proud of that address. You beat me to that, Kate. Damn you. <laughs> Dave's still figuring out his Twitter number. Is the only person in the world that offers a girl his Twitter number? <laughs> <laughs> Come and sit on my perch. Anyway, we need to hurry because Dave's probably on 2% by now. Oh, I am on 2% <laughs> by there. As long as you've got 2%, Kate, you'll be all right. Kate, where can people find you? Do you know your Twitter? My Twitter number is at KateBlakey40. So come and find me on Twitter. Uh, Give okay. me a dial. Give her a ring on, yes. Put your finger in and do that. With call me. <laughs> call me. <laughs> Hang on, is, is Dave doing? Is Dave doing a babe station there? <laughs> Not that I know, but somebody told me. Um, <laughs> Dave and Kate, as always, I thought we'd got through a whole show without any clips, but we haven't. You've only mentioned that once as well. I, I have. I have. But that's I'm being good. Check it out tomorrow, Dave. As Dave has just mentioned it. I'd love BBC, to. BBC.co.uk forward slash Leicester City uh, fans voice forward slash forward slash. Don't forget the forward slash. Exactly. <laughs> Dave slashes both, <laughs> bye, bye. <laughs> both ways, but it is his age. That's why he's always on 2%. Yeah. <laughs> That's why right. Kath is always cleaning the bathroom. I'm going to be perking up to about 100% next week, I'll tell you. No, I'll be back. <laughs> Dave's off to have a to have a to have a Kate sandwich. Thank you all very much. I will Bye. speak to you. Next. Are you going at the weekend, Kate? I am. Yeah. Silly we'll question. see you then. They yeah. sold out the last game, haven't they? They have. I think they have. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I've just bought my Preston ticket as well. I don't know why I'm doing it to myself. It's a long oh. old drive on a Monday night, but so proud of you. Well done. We are. We're behind you, Kate. You're flying the flag. Yeah, somebody's got to go to games. Yeah. Hey, we need a song quickly, Kate, before we go. I don't know. I don't know what to say. What can I sing? I will survive. When you're smiling. 
Yeah. World smiles with you. Get in there. When you're laughing. I okay. Played that this, <laughs> I played that this morning. <laughs> He took me out. He, he, he asked me for my big performance, and I gave him a I big know. performance, and he boots me out like he's Simon know. Cowell. Bloody hell. He's moving uh, uh, us around, Kate. We're not where we should be. And I'm down to 1% now. <laughs> well, Kate's off for a big performance. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Goodbye. Take care. Take care. Thanks to Dave. Thanks to Kate. Uh, <laughs> That went to places I wasn't expecting it to. And, uh, but we will be back. Yes, we will. On um, Thursday with the preview show. Uh, we've got a West Brom. A Baggist fan will be coming on. Uh, somebody that Joey Barton accused of having slanty eyes. Joey Barton. <laughs> what can you do with him? I'm sure, I'm sure everybody's got an idea. Thanks to everybody. that was in the chat we didn't get to watching and uh, and commenting really do appreciate it you still got time to smash the likes if you would be so be, be so kind and please subscribe as well if you've been listening via your favorite podcast platform oh thank you for lending me your ears you can have them back now take care and i'll see you on wednesday at seven o'clock with craig and the preview show good night thanks for watching these videos are tremendous you better like them too or i'll be back The TalkSport Fan Network is the ultimate on-demand destination for the UK's best fan-led football podcasts. Including Leicester Till I Die, independent analysis and reaction for the Foxes Faithful. The TalkSport Fan Network. Unbeatable club-dedicated content created by the fans, for the fans. Follow the podcast on the TalkSport Fan Network.